Today, we're going to be building a vintage 486 Visa Local Bus gaming PC and then try out some games. Let's get started. First things first, let's go ahead and look at some of the parts I've chosen for this system, starting with the CPU. This is an AMD 486DX266 CPU. I've gone with a 66MHz CPU since it's a great all-rounder for DOS games and is almost the perfect speed. As for the RAM, I've gone with 8 megabytes of 30 pin SIM memory. I could have used higher density modules, sure, but a 486 won't really take advantage of much more memory, so 8 megabytes is a good middle ground. As for the motherboard, I've gone with this ECS VL486 motherboard. Now this one isn't actually made by PC chips, it was manufactured before they merged, so it's a pretty decent motherboard actually. It also features an external battery, meaning there's no chance of battery damage occurring on this motherboard. So it's a great choice. It's also got two Visa slots, a UMC chipset, and 256 kilobytes of cache. For the video card, I've gone with this No Name VLB one. It actually features an NCR chipset though, which allegedly has better performance than S3 and Cirrus Logic cards. I'm not sure how true that is, but it'll be an interesting card to use either way. And it looks pretty cool too. As for sound, I've gone with this Sound Blaster 16 model CT1740 card. This is one of my favourite Sound Blaster 16 models. Not only does it feature real OPL3 synthesis, but it also looks really cool and is a much earlier model than those later Vibra cards. So yeah. To control all of our I.O., I've got this basic multi-I.O. controller which uses Visa Local Bus, so it'll be really fast. And yeah, this just does what it looks like basically, nothing special about it. Rather than use a clunky old hard drive, I'll just be using a compact flash solution as the hard drive in this system. I want to be able to easily transfer games, and using old hard drives isn't good for that. So yeah, compact flash it is. I've just got this little adapter here, $10 online. As for the case, I've gone with this desktop AT one. It looks really nice and suits this era of computing perfectly. Let's go ahead and start building the computer. First of all, I'll install all of the 8 megabytes of RAM. Now I'm going to go ahead and install a cooler on the CPU. It's a pretty primitive design, so you have to put the CPU in this little plastic holder thing, and then you have to install it in the motherboard, and you need to get the chip orientation correct, it isn't keyed. From there you can go ahead and place the cooler on, with a lot of effort, and just like that. Yeah, cooler installed. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up our AT case so we can install the motherboard. I've always found it really annoying to install AT motherboards. It's just like so hard to line them up, it's crazy. But eventually I managed to get this one installed correctly. All we need to do is go ahead and install one screw and from there our motherboard is completely installed. Now I'm going to go ahead and wire up all the cases I.O. to the motherboard. This case is really cramped so before I can actually install the power supply I have to plug in the power connectors to the motherboard. 
and make sure you always align them black to black because if you put it the other way the motherboard will get fried. Now that we've connected the motherboard power I can actually go ahead and install the power supply. Yay! And I'm using a really good quality Seasonic one. Now we need to go ahead and wire up the case power switch. Thankfully I won't actually have to do any wiring, I just need to screw the power switch in. And yeah, now that's done. One thing you may have noticed about this case is that it doesn't let you screw in five and a quarter drives, so you need to use these rails to install them. I've got this nice five and a quarter inch floppy drive I want to install in this PC, so I'll go ahead and attach the rails. Once that's done we can go ahead and install the floppy drive into the PC, but it actually conflicts with the power supply's cables, so I had to fiddle with them a bunch to get them out of the way. Eventually I got the drive in fine though. Now I'll go ahead and screw in the drive. Now I'll go ahead and prepare the multi IO controller card. I'm going to plug in a few extra ports here and they just connect very easily. Next I'll plug in an IDE cable and a floppy drive cable. Now I'll go ahead and install the Visa Multi-IO controller into the PC. These things are really difficult to install, they just don't really fit that well, but I got it in eventually. Now I'm going to go ahead and sort out the compact flash to IDE adapter. I'll just go ahead and plug it into the IDE cable here, and since it's a keyed cable it makes it really easy to get it round the right way. From there I can go ahead and insert it into the slot and plug in the floppy drive power connector to it. Now I'll just screw it in. Next I'll plug in the floppy drives, both the 5 and a quarter and 3 and a half inch one. Now I'm going to go ahead and install my extra I.O. into another slot on the case. I was going to go ahead and install the sound blaster in this slot close to the top but it actually interferes with the CPU cooler, meaning the only place I can put the sound card is at the top ISA slot. So moving a bunch of cables around I had to go ahead and swap them around. But however once that's done, yeah, our sound card is now installed and nothing's conflicting. Nice. To complete our rear I.O. I'll go ahead and install a cover panel here. Now it's time to go ahead and put the lid back on the case. It's really starting to look like a 486 now, which is awesome. And it was pretty tricky to get on with all the cables inside, but I managed to slide it on eventually. Now I'm going to go ahead and screw the lid of the case on. But whilst I was doing this I remembered I forgot to screw in the power supply, so I went ahead and did that too. Nice. And now finally I'll go ahead and install a compact flash card which has DOS 6.22 and Windows on it already. At this point we've basically got a complete 486 system, so let's set it up and try out some games.
Well, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.